Third game in a row here, Teddy, in the tournament that we're at a historically high total involving Alabama. I believe these three totals that we've seen involving the Crimson Tide have a bunk, have been a, the three highest in the last 30 years of the tournament. Obviously, with a dance partner like North Carolina, it is very reasonable to expect a lot of points. I'm not shocked at all to see this total so high. But I want to talk about the spread. Of all the Sweet 16 spreads, this is the one that jumped out to me because, believe it or not, I personally have this game lined closer to a pick em. I get that Bama's off a pretty ugly win over Grand Canyon. I saw a lot on Twitter as that game was going on the stretch. Oh, my God, this game is ugly. Bama can play no defense. I get that. The defensive end has been a major issue for Nate Oates' team all year. They've had a pretty favorable path to get to the Sweet 16. Not only do they play a 12 seed yesterday in Grand Canyon, but I thought the first-round matchup against Charleston, another team who's deficient on the defensive end, you know, was, was a good break for the Crimson Tide. But let's look at this from a numbers perspective, guys. Should Bama really be getting the same number of points that Michigan State did against North Carolina? I would say no. If Alabama played Michigan State tonight on a neutral floor, I would have Alabama as a two-point favorite. Now, North Carolina obviously covered that number against Michigan State in the last round, so we have to bump them up a little. But I'm not downgrading Bama because they covered both spreads over the weekend as well. It's worth noting, Tar Heels went down by double digits early against Sparty. Credit to them for coming all the way back and pretty quickly because Michigan State, if you look at the stats that Evan Maya shares, the kill shot numbers, Michigan State's a hard team to come back uh, against when you're down double digits. But tip your cap to North Carolina, they did it. Obviously, what's ultimately going to determine the outcome of this game, guys, is Bama's three-point shooting. We know they're going to put up a high volume. This under Nate Oates, year in, year out, this is a team that ranks near the top of the country in rim and three rate. They don't take a lot of mid-range jumpers. Either they're trying to get the ball inside at the rim or they're taking threes. They shot the lights out from three against Charleston. They did not against Grand Canyon, eight of 31. I would expect some positive regression from that number. North Carolina opponents, talk about regression. I don't know when the, their negative regression is coming, Teddy, but for the season, outside of Chapel Hill, North Carolina opponents have hit an absurdly low 29.5% from three. That is crazy over the full course of the season. And it's not like North Carolina is great at defending the arc. I've seen all year long teams missing wide open shots from three. One last point I'll make about North Carolina over the last month or so, not a lot of travel. Their first NCAA, their first two games in the tournament were in Charlotte. ACC tournament was in DC. They've played only two true road games since Valentine's Day. Those were against Virginia and Duke. I would argue other than Duke, Bam is better than everyone in the ACC. A pure numbers play. It is not on my card yet, but I wanted to share with the folks that I think this number is off by a couple points. And given what you said, how the line was moving, Teddy, I wouldn't be in a rush to bet it just yet. I'd wait to see how high we go. So you said that you were surprised that North Carolina is laying a comparable number to Alabama compared to uh, what they laid to Michigan State. Just looking at Ken Palm, Ken Palm's got Alabama ranked two points higher than Michigan State. And I agree with that assessment. I think Alabama is better than Sparty. Um, yes, no, maybe so. Oh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then what's the uh, what's the disparity? Well, You're looking at me like well, I have no, 26 I, heads right now. No, no, <laughs> I, I'm saying I was I'm saying I was surprised. Yeah, and Alabama, like I, I think this number should be like one or two, not four, which is what I'm saying. The Michigan State line closed at four. And Alabama, I have better than Michigan. Several, like you said, I have them two points better than Michigan State. So I think this number should be shorter than the number we saw for the North Carolina Michigan State game. So what do you think the markets are seeing that we're not seeing? I don't know. I think it's a combination of North Carolina is a top seed. They looked good. Alabama, we all know the, the narratives out there about how shaky they are defensively. If you look at their losses, that is what is scaring me. Why I did not rush to bet this, even though I think the current number is too high. When Alabama loses, they give up a ton of points. It tends to be the good teams. And North Carolina can score. I think you and I would both agree there. Uh, I don't know. I think it might be public perception that people, that Alabama right now, people aren't running, don't want to bet this team with the defensive liability. But again, like I said, from a few, Pure numbers perspective, Teddy, I do think this number is two points too high. 